Welcome to Global Public Health Podcasts, where we learn from each other about the global and local intersections in health. Hi, I'm your host, Lauren Clark. I'm a professor of nursing at the University of Utah College of Nursing, and I'm bringing to you stories from students with insights into global health. Welcome to Global Public Health Podcasts. Today, our guest is Sean Herman, and I want you to think about the social determinants of health as they apply to non-communicable disease in global settings, particularly as he talks about a setting in the United States. If you have in front of you a list of the social determinants, tick them off as Sean goes through the story, and at the end you'll have a really rich understanding of how chronic disease and non-communicable disease are shaped by our own structure of healthcare access. My name is Sean Herman. I am a third semester nursing student at the University of Utah, and this is my story about global health. My first encounter with global health was serving as an LDS missionary in Houston, Texas, with the Spanish-speaking population there. I ran into quite a few cultural practices there that were new to me and also had to act from time to time as an impromptu interpreter. When I came home from my mission, um, I, I knew I wanted to go into healthcare, I just didn't know where. And so I, I came home and took a course in Spanish grammar to improve my language skills and then took a class up here at the university called Spanish for Medical Providers. And armed with that, I went in and passed the test to become a volunteer interpreter for the university hospital. And now they primarily use the volunteers um, to answer phone calls, answer billing questions, interpret for really basic things. Um, as you get more experience and you spend more time with the professional interpreters, uh, they eventually start sending you to appointments on your own. And most of the appointments I interpreted for were relatively unremarkable. Primary care, simple surgical visits, all sorts of things. But there's one woman that really sticks out to me. We'll call her Stella for the sake of the story. She was in her late 60s. She had end-stage renal disease, and she was in pretty rough shape. But... Stella had a problem in that she, because of her undocumented status and her language difficulties, Stella couldn't navigate our healthcare system. So the only thing that she could rely on, or that she felt she could rely on, was emergency care. So we would see Stella once a week in the emergency room for emergency dialysis, um, which as it turns out, is really expensive for the hospital to do. And we tried talking to Stella and convincing her to come in twice a week to just get normal, non-emergent dialysis without all of the, all of the hurry and without the 2 a.m. visits. And I can tell because I saw Stella again for the same thing six months later that our conversation didn't help her to overcome that boundary as much as we might have liked. Um, but I look back now as I'm coming up on the end of nursing school and I think about Stella and the challenges that she has and it reminds me of the importance of advocacy both for individual patients and for populations. Um, reminds me that no, we really shouldn't have the housekeeper interpret. A qualified interpreter is a really valuable resource. Um, and I, I hope that as I enter practice, I can remember, remember Stella and remember how hard things were for her, how challenging it was for her to navigate our system. And remember that not, not all of those challenges are related just to her language that many people find themselves in similar situations. If I were given the chance to redesign our healthcare system from the ground up, there are a couple of things that I would like to see. 
Right now, the United States spends between 17 and 19 percent of our GDP on health care. That is nearly double what most nations spend. Um, and again, this is by, by GDP. So 17 to 19 cents of every dollar our economy creates goes into health care right now. And there has to be a way to bring that down. Um, I would like to see everyone have access to primary care. Everyone have access to the care that they need, especially as they age, and especially for members of vulnerable populations, um, including immigrants, refugees, people who don't aren't, aren't fluent in English, people who don't have great health literacy on their own. Um, these become increasingly vulnerable, especially as they age. Um, they have more chronic diseases. They're not able to manage those diseases as well. And what ends up happening right now is they end up costing our healthcare system a great deal of money. And so if I could redesign our healthcare system, I would redesign it around education, around health literacy, um, around primary care, and around being willing to have conversations about death. Because more than half of a person's healthcare expenditures comes in the last year of life. Um, and I, I think we have a lot of opportunity to reduce that, to streamline our system, and to reduce the burden of health care on the rest of our economy. I'd like to thank Sean Herman for joining us today for the Global Public Health Podcast. He told us a story on two levels. On the first level, we learned about Stella and social determinants of health in non-communicable disease. But, you know, there was really a second level to his story, and that was a story about him and his transformation as a nurse. He's not quite finished with nursing school at this moment, but I fully anticipate when he leaves and joins the ranks of the working nurses everywhere, that he'll keep in mind the needs of the individual patient, and he's going to become, I just know it, a more effective advocate for people like Stella, that we can come up with better ways for them to access the primary care and the chronic disease management resources they need. Thanks to Sean and all the nurses that take the role of advocacy seriously. Thanks for tuning in to the Global Health Podcast, where we learn from each other about the global, local intersections in health. I'm Lauren Clark. Thanks for joining us.